Hello everyone and welcome back to... I was about to say Ore Collection. Damn, my mind is just not <laughs> with me today. <laughs> You're in a specific headspace today. Yeah, welcome back to Shonen Archive. The series in which me and Zen watch all of Shonen Jump anime that is available to us. Um, every single one of us, one of them, and we do this until the end of time itself where the universe implodes within each other, within each itself? Yeah, implodes inside itself. Bad stuff happens, really. Yeah, space shit happens. Don't don't come at me, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I don't want to hear your explanation. You make shit worse. You make it sound unfun. <laughs> you make the end of the earth sound lame. <laughs> so don't come to me with that. And today we're here to talk about Gintama, which is episodes 82, 83, 84, 85. Back after... I don't even remember what happened last week. Point is, we're back here. <laughs> we're ready to talk about it. <laughs> Talking about Gintama, exactly. Yes, yeah, starting with episode 82. You don't stand in line for the ramen. You stand in line for the self-satisfaction. This is a two-parter. I forget if this is the second one or if this is the first one. No, the, the second one is called You Say Kawaii So Often You Must Really Think You're Cute Stuff. That's the second yes. part, but this is the first part. So go ahead, Zen. Break it down so for us. So the gang is uh, lamenting that they have to eat rice and bread because they don't have any money. Uh, there's like a TV uh, plea for help from this village that is begging people to come and help kill these monsters because there's like evil monsters overrunning a town. Um, they're offering a golden radish to anyone that helps them. So they want to go and get the radish. But then when they get there, the town's mayor is like, everybody get out. We don't want your help. Get out of here. So everyone leaves except for our gang um, because they overhear them saying that when the monsters are killed, they turn into gold. Mm -hmm. um, so they end up staying to kill the monsters and collect the gold. Um, the more and more monsters that people kill, they become like obsessed obsessed with getting the gold they get like this greedy aura around them um they go after the big bad monster supposedly the one who like started the plague of monsters or whatever because they assume that they'll get the most gold um yeah, or orochin something yeah like orochin and then it turns out that orochin is like a, a girl phoenix and she's like yeah uh i needed the power of greed in order to restore myself to my phoenix mode uh, so I made those monsters with gold in them so that you all would be obsessed with getting the gold and your greed would power me up. And now that I'm back in my regular form, all that gold is dirt and all the gold becomes worthless. Um, and she flies off. Yeah. And then they fight over some money they find some, on the like, ground. Some extremely like, small amount of money. Yeah. Yeah, it might be like 100 yen or so. <laughs> Very small amount. Uh, so this episode... It's really weird to talk about like the half parts of it, but the, for this one, I'll just mention the stuff that I remember liking from it. Uh, because it had been so soon since the last time we saw Prince Hada. Prince Hada shows up, and he says very specifically, it's a very rare Prince Hada cameo. You're wasting it. You're, you're wasting your using of me. His joke was really funny where um, Gintoki says his name correctly and then corrects himself to a shitty, like rude nickname instead. Yeah. Oh, idiot. Idiot Prince is like, why are you doing this? Yeah, he's like, you got it right the first time. <laughs> he's suddenly, he's turned from a character who was the asshole at the beginning, and now he's not really doing anything. He's just getting harassed for no reason. <laughs> and he seems to be here, obviously, because there's some kind of monster. But even by the end of it, he's just like, ah, damn it, I waste <laughs> so much time here. And I think he falls off the mountain at the end as well, doesn't he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. perfect <laughs> the perfect use for prince Hada and g so i like that stuff with him there um there is a really funny bit where they start talking about because the golden balls they're kintamas because apparently kintama not only means testicle it can also mean golden ball mm -hmm. so when he's explaining the kintama um he's like slapping away the mare who keeps trying to come near him but he's doing it like in a very funny way i remember uh, pretty funny slaps right there. There's at one point where they're so, um, heavy by the greed that they're like, um, they don't trust the sign that says the mountain up this way. And they do a big, like, how ah, we're not going to believe that sign. And they go downward 
and then like three seconds pass, and so then nothing happens, and they just kind of sneak up <laughs> the the correct yeah, way, they, which like, is... like comedically tiptoe up the correct way. <laughs> yeah, they're like, there was no one there. Like they were expecting like a Bugs Bunny esque move, and it just never happened. <laughs> Um, there's also a, a good bit here that gets followed up in the next episode where, uh, Gintoki can now just know where Sachan is at, at every single given point, And he just throws his sword and is automatically able to know exactly where she is. And that's how he yeah. basically summons and her. he just knocks her out of it. She's like on top of a building, I think. And he knocks her off. Yeah. He just like throws, he just goes, Hah! and then it hits her and she goes, ow. And then he goes like, worthless woman, fine gold for me. And she goes, yes, of course. I would love nothing mm-hmm. more. Yeah, he calls her, he tells her, like, uh, you're gonna be a sniffer dog for us, and she's already wearing a collar. Yeah. And then there's also a good part where he's, like, um, he says, like, saying stuff like that will give people the wrong idea than just, like, uh, about what you're saying about me. But then he's saying this while he has his boot on top of her head, and her, she's face uh-huh. down in the ground. <laughs> So, for a big encapsulation for everything. So, those were the parts. It was a pretty simple, like... There's also a really good stretch of, like, five minutes of episode where her only line is Bow Wow. Yeah, that's right. There is, yeah. <laughs> it's the only line she has. So, I like that part. It was really enjoyable. That's uh, that's why I feel about this part one. The, usually, the part ones are very much, uh... Yeah, I'm just here to enjoy the little thing you got here. So, I enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, just doing some, some silly shit. Yeah, how'd you feel? Yeah, I liked it too. It was fun. It was just a, a good little silly adventure romp. It's kind of one of those things where like there's nothing too much to it, but you just like watching the Gintama cast have fun. Yeah, um, yeah. Definitely I like the recurring sure. joke where Kagura keeps saying Kintama and uh, Shimpashi keeps getting mad because he's like, proper women should not use that word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's a, that's a good bit. <laughs> So, perfectly good. And now let's go into the next one. Also, apparently this Orochin's uh, Phoenix Sykes appearance. I thought it was a reference to Moltres, but it turns out it's actually a, a parody of Phoenix from uh, Tezuka, mm-hmm. the creator of um, Astro Boy or Mighty Adam, depending on if you are someone who prefers the official Japanese name <laughs> of also, Astro Boy. apparently there's a bunch of Inuyasha references in this. Really? Dragon Quest and Inuyasha references, yeah. Oh yeah. Well one of the dudes looks exactly like Dai. One of mm-hmm. the dudes in the in the in the adventures. Yeah, a lot of the, apparently several of the warriors pictured are from the Dragon Quest series. And multiple of the monsters are um like knockoff Inuyasha monsters. <laughs> That's good. That's a good level. I didn't even realize the Inuyasha ones, even though I've watched plenty of Inuyasha back in my day. From what I remember watching it at 11 p.m., being forcing myself to stay up to watch it and go to school the next day. Uh, let's go on to part B, which is like I said in the beginning. You say kawaii so often, you must really think you're cute stuff. So, uh, the girl that they save from the drug gang a long time ago... Uh, is returned. She's trying to hire them because her boyfriend uh, is in trouble with his old gang. Um, the group doesn't really want to help that much, but they do end up deciding to help. And, and then the uh, group actively shit talk this woman. <laughs> yeah, it, most of this episode is just them calling her fat and ugly. Yeah, um, yo, fatty, what up, pig? Literally Miss the Piggy. entire thing. Yeah, You're fat. like they keep like messy. Like her name is uh, what is it, Kimiko? Yeah, and they they call her like Porkiko or something like all the time. <laughs> Just nonstop. That's what the most 2007 the, that you could tell when Gitsop is made. This specific episode was made in 2007. Is just how ready they're willing to let the fat jokes fly. <laughs> yes, uh, just all the time. Um, nonstop. There is. Yeah, this gang that he's trying to get away from, so they finally agree to help her. Uh, they go. It turns out he was only dating her for the money. Um, so Gintoki has his little moment of, like, I'm still kind of an okay person. But, you know, not that much. You hurt uh, fatty feeling? Me no yeah, like. It, <laughs> it turns out that he was, like, stealing drugs from them, and the, they end up saving the day at the end by cutting open the drug bag and the gang chases after like all the discarded bits of 
drugs instead of uh, chasing after them so they can get away. Uh, and then she's still carrying his body around. And Gintoki's like, what, are you going to stay with him after all that because you can't date anyone else? And she says, no, uh, I'm going to stay with him after all that because no one else would date him. Uh, and then she walks away. Yeah. And it turns out she's right because she eventually she does end up breaking up with him and they're not together anymore, as someone told me, which was discussed in a question someone asked to the the maker of Gintama. Apparently Shame. also th- this guy who is her boyfriend is the son of the Just Away guy. Really? Yeah, the, the shirtless, the one who said the, the the he read the diary and he talked about his kid being depressed because he got fired. This is that kid. That's funny. Yeah, That's I had, super funny. Yeah, I had so that might explain why those just away dudes are at the ED is because of their small reference to this guy. It's like the one reason I can think of. But in terms of this one, it ends up being a little bit of a. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm someone, you know, obviously me and you, Zen, we have a past here, specifically no fat chicks. I'm not too lowbrow to say I enjoy a good fat joke, but it has to actually be kind of good. <laughs> That's my one. Yeah, uh, a lot of these were not that funny. Um, no. I, I think the, the ham- Hamiko one was pretty funny. Yeah, that's uh, all right. Kimiko apparently in Japanese means noble girl, and Hamiko means ham girl. So I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, um, that's all right, but... But most of them are just like, whoa, it's crazy how fat and ugly you are, like, over <laughs> and over again. Yeah, it's just him going like, damn, girl, you fat. If you were... <laughs> were you being made into some kind of food dish? Fatty? Yeah, like, it, it almost feels like more like it's that. literally almost every line of dialogue. Are you some kind of sausage fatty? Is that what you're going on right now? It's the like... one, okay, the one fat joke that I thought was funny was when um, it's revealed that the boyfriend is also fat. Uh-huh. And Gintoki's like, yeah, no, this wasn't part of the deal. <laughs> <laughs> Too much fat. Okay, that was actually a good one. I was yeah, told there was like... he was supposed to like haul him out of there on that rope like because they lowered him down by a rope. Yeah. And then it turns out the boyfriend was also fat. And he's like, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, th- that's good. That's a good one. But yeah, the your mileage varies for a lot of fat jokes. It, it really kind of it has to be good. It has to be worth something. As someone who's heard a lot of fat jokes over his life, you really got to bring something, man. <laughs> it's not enough to just say yeah, fat over like again. just to be like, wow, you are large. It's like okay, <laughs> you know. yeah. Unless yeah, it just doesn't work as well. So that's how I feel about it. And then and then also by the end of this, I ended up feeling a little bit sad for her because it feels like this girl. I, I caught what was gonna about to call her Hamiko. That's not her name. <laughs> Kimiko seems to live a very sad life, and she kind of understands that maybe her life is not in the best straits. But this is she's basically making do with what she has. So it ended up making me just, just feel kind of like bad for the, this. Is one of the very few ones where it feels like Kimiko gets help and then doesn't really have a happy ending. She just yeah. has an ending. Yeah. So. And then you know, Kentucky was like kind of mad on her behalf because that guy was being a dick to her like and tried to abandon her um and i was like oh is he gonna be like nice after all and then it was just like no <laughs> he's no. still gonna be a giant dick to her at the end it's, it's something to the can of someone going like listen fatty i can make fun of you because you're my fatty <laughs> i'm be damned if i let anyone else <laughs> bully my fatty <laughs> <laughs> yeah kind of had that vibe a little bit of that so yeah, I think it could just been a little bit better. Outside of that one joke, which was pretty good, the the fat one. Now that you reminded me about it, about the rope, that is good. <laughs> Where he's just like, no, I don't want to do this. Yeah, he's just like, yeah, no, this wasn't part of the deal to carry two fat people on the <laughs> rope at the same time. Because that's relatable. I would also have just gone, hell no, <laughs> no. Well, there you go. That's the episode. Now let's go on to episode 83. Zen, you watched this episode on a big TV, right? Yeah. Did you watch all of the ED? Uh, no. Okay. I watch it on Crunchyroll, which skips the... Oh, man. Uh... You may- I was going to ask you. Okay, you know what? Tell us the entire thing, and then I'm going to tell you what you missed by skipping the ED. Okay. So go ahead. Tell us about this one, because I cannot believe you skipped this, because I was about to go, oh, my God. 
I hope there was someone else in the room at, with you watching at the time and you had to see it with them. Because <laughs> it would have been amazing. But go ahead, tell us what the episode's about. The episode's name is Rank Has Nothing to Do with Luck. So uh, all of the hostesses at Otai's host club are sick. Um, in a bad way, not in a good way. They're, they're, they're not like sick. They're ill. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're ill, yeah. They're, <laughs> they got yeah, some... They have a virus. Um, there's apparently supposed to be an important guest coming, so the owner of the club is desperate for help to try to um, get enough people there. And so he hires the Gintama gang to find replacement women for this. Uh, they end up just enlisting like whoever they can get. Like they get Kube who just walks in. Um, whoever that like legendary four sword guy that fought against Kondo. I don't remember his name. Yeah, the the guy who has his eyes cl- closed all the yeah, time. Yeah, the guy whose eyes are the one who wiped his ass with a picture of Kube. <laughs> That's um, what is always going to be known as for us. Ayumi. Let me see. Is that yes? Ayumi. 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 Yeah. Ayumi. Okay, let's go for Ayumi. Whatever. Whatever. Yes, him. <laughs> um, him. Uh, Catherine and Sachan, who uh, for some reason only Kube like understands the assignment and dresses like a girl. Because mm-hmm. Ayumu and Catherine are just in towels with, like, floaties. So a friend of mine pointed this out to me, and I finally realized what they were doing. Because Yumi makes a lot of reference to them being doing, like, a lot of weird stuff. Because, like, that's not this kind of place. He's dressing up as a Soapland person. As a what? A Soapland. Have you never heard of a Soapland before? No. It's like a... A Soapland is, like, a legalized prostitution in Japan where they, like go up and they you see the thing that they have in their hand the like little like red thing you put them down they put soap all over your body and they kind of like well you know they do things to you zen i don't know i don't know how much more i need to explain this other than it is legalized prostitution <laughs> a, a soap land so that's that's why they're dressed up like that because they would do like I don't want to explain more than I have to. Just know that it's a <laughs> reference to something. Okay, it's close enough. I get it. I get yeah, it. Yeah, they, they they never um, really say it out loud. That, well, that's what it is. But our friend's like, oh, yeah, he, they're dressed like that. I was, I was like, oh, my fucking God, you're right. That's why they're dressed like that. Which makes it really funny when you talk to me and you finally do the same. Yeah, so uh, Sachan is also there dressed up in, like, a BDSM outfit. Uh and the joke is that literally none of them actually understand what the fuck they're doing. Um, I, I made the joke here that this is how my hostess clubs and Yakuza end up looking like. <laughs> um, eventually it's revealed that the important guest is the Shogun. Uh, yeah. Like the actual Shogun. The for real fucking Shogun? <laughs> the, the literally the real Shogun, yeah. Yeah. Um, Catherine and Ayamu uh, knock themselves unconscious, and then the manager also knocks himself unconscious. And there's a really good scene when his, when the manager knocks himself out by falling on the floor, and Gintoki's like, "No, okay, let's move him." <laughs> Get him out of the way. <laughs> yeah, it was really good. He's <laughs> like, funny. "No, not him." All right, let's go. Mm-hmm. Um, they the shogun is coming back in. And Gintoki and Shimpachi have this idea where, like, if they are impressive enough for the Shogun, they can make a lot of money. So they quickly throw the towels and fucking bed thing that uh, Aimu and Catherine had on to pose as uh, women. So this I is the they, return I... of uh, Gintoki's old cross-dressing alter ego from, like, a <laughs> long time ago. Yes, uh, Paco is back with Vengeance. Paco, yeah. I think the reason they end up doing this is because they needed two girls because Catherine and Ayumi passed out. So they decided to go for it. And then when they say specifically, I think Tay goes like, what are you guys wearing? Like, in her mind, because like, we didn't have time to find any yeah, other. Like, we had no time to put on good disguises. <laughs> Just the worst disguises of the world. But yeah, continue. Um, so they end up all kind of together with the Shogun. Um. And they decide to play the the King's Game. Everyone knows that shit because everyone's King's played Persona. King's Game. <laughs> uh, um, so they decide to play the King's Game. 
They call um, it the Shogun And stick every time one. someone gets the Shogun stick and they give an order, it is always the Shogun that has the bad <laughs> stick that has to do the thing. Every time. This poor Shogun. <laughs> Um, eventually he ends up completely naked, um, and everyone keeps trying to help him, that's the thing. So, like, every time they get the bad one, they give an order that's like, go help the Shogun out. Um, like, eventually he loses all of his clothes except his underwear. And so, uh, I think it's Otai who gets it, and she's like... The person needs to go out and buy underwear. Uh, I want someone to give their outfit to whoever looks the coldest. Well, that's that's uh, oh, Sachan yeah, that's before. afterwards. Yeah, that's uh, Otai first is like, I want whoever I my number is to go and um, to go give your jacket or give your clothes to whoever looks coldest. Um, and Shinpachi's like, yeah, sis, you got it. You know, you're going to help the Shogun. And someone's going to have to give him his coat. But then the Shogun was the one she picked. So he ended up giving Sachan his underwear. <laughs> And then Sachan gets it, and she's like, okay, whoever I pick has to go buy underwear from the store. And again, they're like, ah, she gets it. She's in on the plan. And then again, the Shogun is the one who gets it. So he just, like, straight face gets up and walks out and just starts running down the street. <laughs> and um, the Shinsengumi are also there to protect them, and they just see this man running full sprint outside. Yeah, just naked. And so they're, like, chasing after him in tanks and shit. Um, and then all of the hostesses run with him because they want to quote unquote continue the game. Um, Kagura holds up a big pile of sticks, and they're all the Shogun stick, uh, mm -hmm. just so the Shogun has to win. Uh, and then they want him to go ahead and give an order, and the order he gives is for them to stop the Shinsengumi from following him, so he cannot be like doted on for a little bit. So they turn around and rush the tanks. <laughs> all in their uh, hostess outfits. Um, at the end of the episode, he is kind of just out naked, looking at the fucking river. Yeah, and uh, Kube is there. Um, they they had to be buy the underwear because he couldn't actually go inside <laughs> naked. To yeah. Buy the uh, Kube is there, and Kube <laughs> ends up buying the underwear for him. And when Kube goes to hand the bag over. He accidentally touches her hand, which triggers this impulse that she has to body slam him. So she flips him and the entirety of the bench into the river. And, and that's where it ends. It ends yeah. on a freeze frame of him getting tossed into the river. Okay, so here's the part you missed out. On the ED, you know how it's just nothing but a bunch of shirtless dudes? Mm -hmm. They add the Shogun. That's funny. And the Shogun starts off with his head, super ripped muscles, slow pan down until you just see a junk, his junk. It's all the way <laughs> there, full screen, just on the junk, and uh, then it goes funny. away. And that's why I wanted to ask you, I was like, damn it, on the big screen, you had to see this giant man's junk. Would have been great, but yeah, I love that. I I fucking lost it when he showed up on the ED. I was like, I can't believe they fucking added it to him. And it's only for this episode too, because when I went when I checked out the next episode's ED, he was not in there. I'm gonna assume because they actually couldn't include an ED where a naked man's junk is constantly on the screen. <laughs> That's funny as fuck. Yeah, but yes, this episode, episode eighty three. Let me tell you about something. I love this episode <laughs> so much. Yeah, this one's really good. Uh, is... One of the funniest lines I think I've ever seen is when they're in the tanks and they go, uh, Commander, the hostesses are coming this way. <laughs> and they're just bum rushing it. It's so good. Like there, There's a lot of like... First of all, it's really funny that they did kind of have been setting up this character just little bits, like of, like the girl who Kagura was a friend in for a brief bit in a part two episode in episode twelve. This is her brother. They've also kind of made mention that there's a shogun that kind of goes across the entire land, and then he just randomly shows up because up until he shows up and says like basically, "Hey, it's a shogun," because you actually think this episode's going to be about them. 
uh, hanging out with the Shinsen Gumi as hostesses, but it's not because Matsudaira is there, so you think it's going to be them. But then the actual reveal is, is that it's the actual Shogun, and then they're like, that can't be the real Shogun, and then they're like, no, that's the for realsy for realsy Shogun that we're dealing with here. Yeah, so like I, he keeps uh, Otai keeps saying, hey, um, what do you do? And he's like, oh, I'm the Shogun, and she's like, ha, well, that's a good joke, but for real, what do you do? And he's like. I am the Shogun. <laughs> I am the just dead faced. I am the Shogun. Uh, and then, then they're actually messing with him. It's hilarious too because all the things they have to ask. One of my favorite bits is so funny, is when they he gives the underwear and then Sachan's like, "Oh, this stinks. I don't want it." And then he goes like, yeah, "Don't say that, Shogun. Hold back your tears." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no, the Shogun is grown teary eyed. Is he crying? He's crying, isn't he? They're just like yeah. constantly. This is poor fucking Shogun dealing with everything, but uh, this is also, again, a really good gag when they're like, we need women, and then he's like, Kentucky's like, I got one, and he just fucking throws his sword and hits Sachan. Yeah, she's she's in the roof of the building, too. He throws it up through the roof tile, <laughs> and it knocks her down. It's also stabbed into uh, her head. It is. It was a fantastic throw on his part. Um... <clears throat> I also liked it when QB's, uh, QB being there, because it was really uh, good stuff there. Kind of a follow-up of them still going like, listen, I know you might think this makes me very uncomfortable, but I also feel much worse about what I put you through, so it doesn't matter. I'm going to do this. I'm here to dress up like this. Let's go. <laughs> very much like, okay, fair enough. They go, they go that way, so it was nice seeing them there. There's also uh, a really good joke with <clears throat> QB when Kentucky's like... <clears throat> This is going to be tough on you. You're going to get weird dudes who grab your ass and stuff. And Kyubei's like, it's fine. I'll, I'll do what I have to. And as Gintoki is walking by her, he puts his hand on her shoulder and, like, pats her on the shoulder. And she fucking grabs him and launches him through a wall. <laughs> yeah. While he's saying it's natural to feel uncomfortable when someone touches yeah, he's your like ass. He's, like, consoling her. He's, like, trying to help her. Yeah, it's like, listen, we all understand this could be a very unfortunate thing here. Um... I also liked it when I think when they showed up. I, this is it's funny because the the length of jokes I do think are funny. I think uh, constant fat jokes not funny. Constantly making fun of Catherine's age is funny to me. Yes, <laughs> when, it's really funny when she <laughs> shows when she shows up and then like the the hostess dude is like, "Oh come on, man!" <laughs> I asked it's him funny. to be. A- he he uh, uh he reacts more disappointed in Catherine than he does in Ayamu, who's literally <laughs> just a dude in a towel. <laughs> Yeah, which is really good. And then she also starts saying, like, my going rate is this for this. And it's like, why are you charging so much? It's like, I'm a, I'm a niche quality. <laughs> um, I also like there's a brief moment where uh, when Okita's talking to Sachan as well, where it's like uh, suddenly his ma- uh, ma- machism. Fuck, man, I can never masochism. pronounce it masochism is awakened in something where he's talking about like so what are you like going rates on like <laughs> specifically tie up and things like that like he's trying to get like cut a good deal <laughs> over what yeah what he's he like uh, he can sense that Sachan is masochistic and like his inner sadism comes out yeah which is really good uh there's also a brief fit when they're going for the king's game where all four of them are like going fucking crazy demon wise <laughs> to try and get them <laughs> Yeah, where uh, who is? It's when Matsudaira is the one because he's the one that proposes the game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then ends up the, being uh, uh, Tai Kagura, Kyuubi, and um, Sachan all Sachan. crazy go for the sticks. Yeah, they have like glowing red eyes, like jumping at him, and I think they end up launching him across the building. <laughs> they do complete. He, he gets knocked out from this point on. He's not featured in the episode after this bit because he is knocked cold <laughs> and uh yeah everything with the shogun was great it was a real it's really funny this he's like a, he's like the ultimate straight man in this case because it seems like he's kind of down for everything but then there was also that part where he just kind of starts crying <laughs> yeah he's just straight up crying yeah uh, i also like how uh gintoki keeps saying mean things about him that the shogun keeps overhearing and not like being bothered by <laughs> like he says that the shogun has like an unimpressive dick and he's like traditionally <laughs> shoguns have unimpressive dicks <laughs> yeah that was the part he's like oh no with his unimpressive dick what is he going to do 
<laughs> and then that's what he's saying. Like else he says too. I think that's he says like, it when, when he's running out. I think they also make mention of his dick when he's running away. He's like, oh no, everyone can see your tiny soldier. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> yeah, he, he just keeps saying like rude things. And then the Shogun is like, traditionally, that is true of Shogun. <laughs> <laughs> he's just very down for whatever's got going on here. So Yeah, see, I like that because he's not like a straight man where it's like, He's not like an Arrested Development straight man where everything has to be stupid, you mm-hmm. know, because all the reaction has to be like, this is dumb. He's uh, he's like a straight man who's totally into it. He's just <laughs> having a good time. He he's is having a funny time. or wacky, but he's like having fun. Yes, he definitely comes off as someone, which is, I think, what they're trying to get here, who's lived a very sheltered life. And this is kind of their first taste of actual freedom and trying to experience stuff. So he's kind of just like rolling with it going like, yes, but he also doesn't have the social skills. So he reacts like saying stuff like, I don't see how that's a really a problem. I'm the Shogun. My family is known for having tiny penises. Yeah. He's just like, yes, traditionally the Shogun's penis is no more impressive than an average soldier's. <laughs> Uh, and I also like that moment where he was trying to ha- he was trying to have like a good soft moment there at the end to say like you know I don't get out very much and then he touches Hubie just a, by a slight inch and he gets thrown into the river and you never hear him finish his statement. <laughs> so this episode I had just so much fun. This one this one was just a straight up like awesome <laughs> straight fun good introduction yeah, for a character. Extremely good uh, episode. Yes. Uh, do you have anything more? Sp- then I also like seeing the return of Paco as well. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was like, seeing yeah. Seeing Paco then was funny. Um, I also the whole realized- episode's good. I love the the sequence where um, they keep trying to be like, oh god, someone has to help the Shogun, and everyone keeps trying, and it just doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't work, work out because he's always got the bad stick. Yeah, I, I, there's also, I think, a pretty good bit where I think where uh, Sachan gets it. And I think her first actual thing she was going to say is going to, the king, someone's going to have to have sex with Gintoki, but he stops her before she can say anything. Because he realizes, I think, like, by the way this is going, it's not going to go well for me if you finish yeah. whatever statement you got going. And also, uh, they, she's, like, breaking the rules. Because yeah. she gets the stick, and she's just like, I want to have sex with Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I can't do it that way. It's not how the game works. You know, you're breaking the rules. It's not fair. But yeah, and there's also a good bit there where um, when the Shinsengumi first show up and they try and not, they try and do their voice, but they start talking like Inoki, a uh, Japanese wrestler. Yeah, so they, they like, change their faces too. They like jut out their lower jaw. Yeah, they look and exactly Shibashi's like, like no one, no one's going to buy that. Um and then Kagura does it, and then Kyuve does it. <laughs> and they never put two and two together <laughs> who they were. No, they never figure it out <laughs> who it is. No, there is also a good bit there where they kind of refuse to uh, consider Kagura as an option for the hostess club. But she keeps saying, like, oh, no, add me, right? Write me. And then she puts on, like, makeup. To- I mean, she makes herself look like a clown. <laughs> Yeah, she's she like, an- like terrible makeup, and they still don't take her, and she's like super offended by it. And then they finally pick her at the end, but uh, she's like been crying her makeup all <laughs> over her face. <laughs> I thought that was very cute. That they kind of do reason he didn't want to pick her is because it is an alcoholic place and she's underage. So he's like, "Listen, we're desperate. Only drink orange juice, and you can do it." And she's like, "Yes, <laughs> thank you." <laughs> but I like that, but. Yeah, I thought it was a great episode. And I also realized why they were saying... I think in the beginning of this episode, they say, like, oh, no, we got complaints about the last episode, and we're so sorry that this is the (laughs) follow-up because of what we're about to show. Uh, Oh, there's also a really good bit where... um, Because they start saying, like, the reason Tai didn't get sick is that an idiot can't catch a cold. And when she says that, she knocks out the <laughs> the manager and says, make sure you wear a white gown, take lots of sleeping pills and get enough sleep. And the white clothes are sem- supposed to symbolize death. And she's saying, basically, go kill yourself. Yeah, she's basically saying, kill yourself. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, great stuff. Yeah, uh, g- uh, the Gintama anime is being criticized. And right when there's an episode like this. <laughs> 
so they knew going into it, it was like, oh, we're going to get some shit for this one. But it worked out great for me. I, I loved it. you have anything else to say about this one, Zen? Uh, no, one of my favorite just for fun episodes of all time, for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Loved it. Real but good otherwise, in- you know, is yes. what it is. Real good introduction to the Shogun character. Now let's talk about this next one. Episode 84, which is the part, the start of a two-parter. This one is going to be completely lost on us, just because apparently this is a reference to a very specific Japanese character, down to, like, the way he uses coins, which I did not pick up on until I started looking up, going, like, what the fuck is this character's deal? I don't understand! Yeah, the hard, hard-boiled hard guy. It's like hard a Hard-boiled detective. detective. Yeah. Episode 84, hard-boiled egg on a man's heart. Uh, this is so just like this really long ass short stories of like a hard boiled detective living a hard boiled life before Gintoki's like we have to we seriously have to start the show like it's, we're already in the shitter and we need to get people into the show. He says it's been five minutes <laughs> and he's right in I was feeling the same way. I was like it's been five minutes. <laughs> Could this been not stop? Um eventually they they get to the actual episode and the hard boiled detective gets like a call that the 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 fox the thief that he's been after for a long time is striking again um he ends up meeting the gang who are dressed as foxes for a completely different thing um the detective gets suspended for not catching the thief um and they all go back to the stall he was getting drunk at before and he kind of gives them the backstory of this like thief character um it becomes very clear to everyone quickly. They they make a joke about how he's not hard boiled at all. He just acts like he is. Yeah. Um, and the, the, the detective it's actually, assistant. It's actually the, the the owner of the shop. I think they keep saying, "You're not hard. This guy's hard boiled. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Look at the way." He yeah, moves. like the old man who runs the shop. He's like, "Oh, he's uh, paying for it. That's so hard boiled." <laughs> the uh, the assistant for the detective comes up and he's like, "Hey." Uh, the fox left a note, and we're gonna go to save him. And so he runs off to chase him, and he pays the guy with this like small change. They're like, "Oh, he's stopping to pay the bill. How hard boiled! Oh my god, he's paying with like pennies." <laughs> um, and the old man just takes the money and hands it to Gintoki, and he's just like, "Go and help him, please, because he's I don't want him to get hurt. Go take care of him." Uh, they go into the museum and they all try to help out. Um, they sneak in through like the rear entrance and then it kind of ends and we go into a segue into the next episode because it's a two part. Yeah. Shows up on a motorcycle drinking a glass of wine. <laughs> really trying to look as hard boiled as possible. And I think they constantly tell him. They constantly just say you need to stop this. You're actively hurting yourself trying to live this life. <laughs> Live with this lie that you're living. Um, so yeah, I think this episode, funny enough, ends up being like... It ends up being really slow because of that beginning part with the hard-boiled detective stuff. It really goes over the top trying yeah, it, to... But see, I like jokes like that, though, because it keeps going for like a really long time. And, and then really it literally long... gets to the point where Gintoki's like, we, you don't understand, we have to start this episode. Like, we're, yes. we're really going to get cancelled if we keep doing this shit. <laughs> Yes. So that's why I'm a little bit like, uh, because I do like that stuff, but then also it was really long. <laughs> it goes both ways on that one, but um, I kind of liked how they showed how bad he is at his job by saying, like, uh, he picks up just three random-ass foxes and then he brings them to the precinct after he though he's finished, like, drinking at the place that they take him to. He's just doing an absolute terrible job and he gets himself suspended. I did like some of the bits inside the hard-boiled detective, like when he's just asleep. He's There's like a brief moment where he's just kind of sleeping and he's just going... And then it plays the theme song <laughs> again, like hard-boiled detective. Yeah, it's like the other turn on yeah then every single time it's kind of like, like there was one point where he's like talking to a thief he's like, oh no, I, I actually don't think this is gonna end very, you know what, I think we should just kind of call call this off. And then he just, like, cuts, like, cuts off mid when he's, like, starting to act like a, like, a, kind of like a coward. Oh, no, and just cuts. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's like, I'm just a normal guy, man. I don't, I don't know if this is a good, good idea. But uh, some of the other things that ends up being uh, interesting is stuff like when he starts paying with the coins, they do kind of mention it in the next episode, which to be fair, when I was seeing it, I was just kind of taking it as, oh yeah, this is just something this character does. But then in the next episode, they actually do kind of give a backstory and say like, why is he specifically acting this way? That kind of makes it go like, oh, that explains a lot. And so it ends up making me feel like this ends up being better. But when I was watching it specifically, I was like, this is just unbearable. (laughs) But then when I actually saw the second episode, it made this one feel a little bit better, if that makes any sense. Where I was like, in the when I was watching this, I was like, I don't see where this is going. But then when I actually saw the full scope of it, and it kind of was like, oh, that's why that was this way. It was that, 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 that. And it was like, okay. I ended up being more okay with it and kind of liking it in that kind of way. Yeah, I agree with you that it it got better after this one. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. It's it's definitely one of those things where it's like once you kind of know a little bit more about why they were setting stuff up, it makes a lot more sense than when you're actually watching it from the get go. Because when when yes. I was watching it from the get go, I just it wasn't feeling it. But now that I'm talking about it after knowing what happens in the next one, I feel much better about it. So that's I also how... this is just a me thing, but I always find it fucking hilarious anytime. Um they play the intro like really deep into an episode. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. when they do the, the I'm a hard boiled man joke, like 12 times. Um, and then Kentucky's like, we have to start the episode. They play the full intro <laughs> and that fucking kills me. Yeah, that's really good. I, I agree with that. That joke's always funny to me because it seems like they will play it. They, uh, they will play the opening even when it's the end of the episode. <laughs> They'll play it, and then they'll lead into the ED. Yeah, they'll play it <laughs> straight into the ending. It's so funny. Any fucking time they play the intro that's not right at the beginning, I, I die. Yeah, it's really good. I, I agree with that one. So, Yeah, this, this episode, I definitely ended up... There's parts of it that I end up liking more that we'll talk about when we get talk about the next episode. But when I was originally watching it, wasn't feeling it, but now I, I do I do feel it. I, I, ended up do, I do think this is good. Even with some caveats of, uh, <laughs> sometimes it felt while I was watching it for the first time, like I was being, uh, gaslit. <laughs> but <laughs> that's what it felt like when I was watching it at the beginning. I was like, am I <laughs> being gaslit? Is just the, this episode just not going to go? What's going on here? But no, it ends up paying off, I feel. <laughs> so that's how I feel about the episode. What about you, Zen? Yeah, it's good. Uh, it, it gets it definitely gets better after you finish the whole thing because uh, it ends up being kind of a nice little one of the more emotional ones. Yeah, um, I, I agree. Yeah, but uh, I still thought this one was okay. And then they also start Kagura also starts singing a song. I think it's called Cat's Eye, which I thought was pretty funny. Where she's like Cat's Eye, it's like, it's like a tiny little Japanese song that she's playing while she's on the motorcycle. <laughs> I thought it was a the a black cat the black cat opening thing, but it turns out it's a sponsor screen type video of something. I had no idea. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Next episode's then hard boiled eggs don't crack. Episode eighty five. So episode eighty five. Um. Oops, I went to the wrong thing. There we go. Yeah, so they're inside the. Uh, museum now. Kagura is just on a fucking Harley Davidson <laughs> on the fucking motorcycle. Um, she causes a disturbance outside and they use it to sneak inside. Um, he keeps talking about how they have to call his wine Camus, which is really funny to me. Uh, and they're like, we're not calling it that. It's just wine. Yeah, um, it's it's a hard-boiled drink. That's why he's yeah. wanting to call it that. Um, they end up uh, getting chased by the security guards um, but the fox jumps in and saves the little assistant and it's revealed like that there's a bunch of foxes all in the building at one time taking out the various security cameras and guards and stuff Gintoki and Shimpachi and uh, the hard-boiled guy and his assistant are all chasing after one of them. Um, 
and they can never seem to catch him because he's super quick and there's like traps and stuff. Um, and eventually, as they're running, they realize they're not moving anywhere, and they're running on a fucking conveyor belt, and then a spiked wall comes down behind them. Um, the ninja avoids the conveyor belt by jumping across the wall, the, the fox. Uh, so Gintoki tries it, and he ends up slamming his foot through the wall because he's too strong. Um, the hard-boiled detective tries to use his special coin toss technique uh, to pull himself up off the conveyor belt, but he just gets tangled up in it. Um, Shimpachi jumps up and grabs a window, and he's like, ah, we can just hold on to this window. Uh, and they all try to do it, but then um, they see this old lady, like, on her deathbed, on the <laughs> conveyor belt. And so they pick up the old lady, and they start running with her, and then they're like, god, this sucks. Um, and then, uh, the, the, her husband is coming back, like, on the way, and they're like, okay, no, we're not picking him up. It's like, Gintoki's like, we're not picking him up. We're not picking him up. We've already got one. We're not doing it. And then, as he's going toward the spikes, he's like, okay, goodbye, honey. And they're like, damn it! And so they're, <laughs> they pick up the old man, and they're still running on this fucking conveyor belt trying to get away from these spikes, and they've got this old woman's deathbed and her husband sitting on it, all in their hands. And then um, their husband, or their, their son starts rolling by, and he's like, I'm going to take all the inheritance for myself. And Gintoki's like, oh, thank God, we can let him go. He's evil. It doesn't matter. He can let him die. He sucks. Uh, and then a fucking baby comes by. <laughs> and Gintoki's like, he's got the dad's face. Even if he's evil, we can't let this baby grow he's, up without a father. He says, this family all has the same eye line. <laughs> <laughs> so they're carrying the, all of them, including the baby. <laughs> <laughs> trying to outrun this fucking conveyor belt. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, eventually they get rescued because Kagura fucking destroys the spike wall with the Harley Davidson out of nowhere. <laughs> um, eventually they all catch up and it's revealed that like the reason that the original Fox who used to be like a, a sort of noble thief has started killing people is because his old ninja clan is like trying to frame him and like ruin him, etc. Ruin his good name that he's built. Yeah. Up. Um. They set off like a trap, and the staircase turns into a ramp, and there's a bunch of oil, and so they're all trying to run up the ramp and not fall into the oil. Um. They slowly get taken out. Um. At first, the, the bad ninjas slowly get taken out, and then the good guys slowly get taken out. Um, eventually, the leader, the bad guy leader, is... Uh, he stabs the, the real fox, because the fox, I think, is trying to rescue Shinpachi? One of them. He's trying to rescue one of them, um, mm -hmm. and the good guy gets stabbed because of it. But then yeah. Gintoki knocks the last villain into the fire where he dies. The um, the old man and the hard-boiled detective are having like a talk with one another because it's revealed that the fox has been the old man who serves him at that roadside stall all this time, who gives him like his his wine and his food, um, and that all this time they've kind of had that relationship with one another, where like he's always chasing after him, but then the thief is also kind of looking after him at the same time, um. Yeah, and then also in the the backstory where we learn about um, the detective's uh, specific, where he his family died in a fire, it's revealed that the person who saved him from that fire was the old man who was the fox guy at the time, and he's also the one that gives him the coins. So that's why he uh, pays with nothing but coins, and that's also I think why the old man also paid them with coins to go yeah no that basically that's the reason why he has so much coins everywhere is that he was given to him from here and he said basically if you use this coin then you should be able to live a decent life doing that and that ends up inspiring him to become a hard-boiled detective because he saw a man that was super hard-boiled <laughs> um they're kind of he's like hanging on to the guy's coin rope and it's slowly fraying 
uh, and it tears, and he falls into the fire. Uh, they reveal that they never found the body of the fox. It was just, like, never located. Um, there was no corpses and no ashes left behind. But then uh, Gintoki and the hard-boiled detective go back to his stall, and they're greeted by the old man, who, in the end, uh, survived. Yeah, you don't see him, but you you You, you know don't see him, but great. from their reactions, it's... Yeah, it's pretty generally funny. him. Yeah. So yeah. Um. So yeah, the, this specific character, by the way, before we talk about this episode, just because I need to look it up, he is based off a specific character, like a character called Zenigata Hiji, and he was specifically a dude who caught criminals by throwing coins at them. <laughs> and then his That's look funny. is yeah, and then his look is based off of John Woo because of his film Hard Boil. <laughs> so Hard Boil Detective. The Hard Boiled Detective part is based off of John Woo, and then he looks like Chow Young Fat, who was the main actor of Hard Boil. So it all comes around perfect circle. So yeah, this episode ends up making, I feel, the previous one much better with the actual added backstory of everything. I end up liking the character a lot more in this one, because he has a lot more funny bits in here. I can't remember if it's the beginning of this episode or the end of the last one where he talks about, like, men are creatures who understand each other only by fighting it out with their fists. When he's specifically talking about his rivalry with the fox. And then the backstory, it shows him, like, being, like, spanked and sat on by a woman. (laughs) Yeah. He's like, what kind of flashback is that? I think it's Shibashi, because, like, this isn't even a fight. (laughs) Yeah, you're not fighting. It's It's a terrible flashback. Uh, there's also a bit where they're pretending to hide from the cops and, uh, Gintoki and Shinpachi are in the samurai armor, but then the dude is, like, holding a shotgun to a statue of Yasu. <laughs> He's just like... Yeah, I like, uh, the, the bit, too, is pretty funny when they're in the armor and, uh, the, um, Gintoki's like, you're gonna ruin it because you're wearing, uh, glasses. And Shinpachi's like, glasses are armor for the eyes. (laughs) Yeah, that's really good. Um, Of course, that bit with the spike wall with the old man and the family was just fucking hilarious. That bit's one of the funniest bits, maybe, in all of it. Um, Yeah, it's a lot. Again, we always talk about him. We don't talk about him enough, but the Gintoki voice actor fucking sells every single bit of exhaustion when a joke goes too far <laughs> when he's like yeah he's the gintoki voice actor is incredible uh, i mean obviously he's joseph joestar in oh, the jojo oh, yeah. anime as well so anyone who doesn't know gintama there you go that's that's who we're talking about um he's fucking great all, all his delivery anytime is perfect yeah. The but, fucking but... screaming that he does when the baby comes down the conveyor belt <laughs> Yeah, and he screams, you have to live no matter how evil you are, a child needs a spirit. <laughs> yeah. So fucking good. It's so fucking funny. The, this, the, that bit which just got me so fucking good. It was so funny. And yeah. Oh, yeah, some shit. I don't know if actually, because this takes place after the ED, I don't know if uh, Crunchyroll showed you this, but they showed us the beginning of the next um, arc. Of the Okita arc. I, it did show me this, where uh, the the um, dramatic stabbing of Hijikata. And he's like, oh, who is... And he like falls down and he pulls uh, the mask off and it's Okita. But yeah. then we keep cutting to different ways that Hijikata gets killed. <laughs> and it re- it's revealed that Okita counts sheep by killing Hijikata. That got me pretty good, because I thought, like, this was a setup for the next arc. Well, I yeah, because ne- they play it totally straight. It almost looks like uh, the Benny Zakura stuff with... Um, it did! <laughs> Katsura, where he's, like, just standing out on, like, a dark night alone, and all of a sudden he's randomly stabbed in the back by someone. Yeah, with the moon in the background and everything. Yeah, and, like, his cigarette falls and stuff. Yeah, I thought that was really well done, and then the reveal that he counts sheep by killing him was really good. So yeah, if okay, I knew, I, I saw some people were like, "Oh man, don't you guys aren't starting another arc before you actually?" It's like, no, don't worry. It's literally just all we know is that Okita's sister shows up, and then they say that's it, and then we'll learn more next week. But I thought it was a pretty good way. They really got me with the Okita stabbing Hijikata. I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> Yeah, I, I thought it was completely, like, a real thing until, um, the, 
the I count killing Hijikatas as counting sheep <laughs> joke. Yeah, that was pretty good. Um, but yeah, this episode I thought was great, and this was also a pretty good mini arc here for Hard Boiled Detective. I really did like the reveal of his backstory and explaining the coins and stuff like that, because I was like, oh yeah, he does use like a lot of like coin based weaponry. I thought it was just like a weird thing he just did, but it wasn't until it was like, oh yeah, this is the reason why he's doing it, and it wasn't like super like made fun of either. It was just except for that one part in the previous episode, but it's just something that he just kind of does. And so I thought it was a pretty cool way of actually showing it off here. And then I did also like the fact that in the last episode, they kept calling the old man, oh, he's the true hard-boiled. You, this other guy, he's a pretender, but this guy gets it. And then it turns out like he actually was <laughs> the hard-boiled guy. That was the reason he got so inspired by. So I thought that was nice. Ended up being a perfectly good two uh, mini episode arc, I felt like. Yeah, I thought but, it was very good. I enjoyed mm-hmm. it. Yeah, some good, good, uh, good laughy bits, especially again with that baby man. So funny <laughs> when it rolls up, especially that old man in his days look. Was like, I'm coming for you, dear. Then when he picks up, he's like, They're you're right next to each other. Come on, <laughs> open your eyes. Uh, really funny. But yeah, that's uh, anything else you have to specifically say about episode eighty five, Zen? No. I thought it was good. Uh, I really liked, obviously, the conveyor belt gag. It's one of my favorite ones in any episode we've seen. Yeah, it was um, really good. The, uh, the Harley Davidson joke was really funny, too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they start talking about uh, Bambi and Dumbo. Didn't they say, I need to jump up there like I'm Bambi? <laughs> he says... Uh, yeah, he says something like he needs to, he can't jump like Bambi, and he can't flap his ears to fly. Like with a like Dumbo? Yeah. Yeah. So, really good stuff. I can't wait to see some more from this. So, next week, we'll be talking about episodes 86 and 87, which are a tiny little Okita arc from based off of what this uh, wiki tells me. And then we'll be talking about episodes 88, 89, and 90. And then it looks like we're, well, there's another little tiny arc thing. But then we're basically t- two episodes away from being done with another 100 episodes. No, we'll be done with 100 episodes of Gintama. Uh-huh. Crazy. We're making our way there, Zen. We're almost at the halfway point. <laughs> where we're yeah, gonna get we it. really are uh, flying through it. I'll tell you that. I didn't yeah. think we'd get this far. I really didn't. I thought we'd watch a few and be like, okay, that was silly. Time to uh, move on, yeah. But it ended up being great. Yeah, I can't I can't wait to talk more about it. So I've already told the people obviously that uh GX for season 1, we will go with our original plan of Shonen Archive, which is that we will finish season 1 of GX and then we will move on to something else that we have not spoken about yet that we will reveal yes, eventually still, over time. Still a secret. Still a secret for now. Um, we'll reveal it in the final GX episode, which I think the current plan is for that to be Wednesday night of recorded. So probably yeah. up on a Thursday, I would assume. I don't really know when yeah. you plan to put it. But. That sounds right, Zen. I feel like <laughs> that's a pretty good idea to be 100% real with you. Chances are it will come up uh, Thursday, hopefully. every If everything goes well, of course, it should be up by then. And then we will have a little... We will reveal what the next thing will be there. But we will continue on with Gintama. Because it's a hell of a series to kind of talk about and just experience. It really is a weird thing. I really didn't think when that Shogun penis showed up, I was like, they they had to have gotten just a buttload of complaints about that, right? You just can't show a man's penis that close up for even just a little. I think it was like at most three seconds. But even then, I felt like <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> You're pushing it real far there. But, yeah, it's always fun to talk about Gintama. It's probably the most fun we have waiting for a Friday as we watch the episodes and then get together and actually talk about it. Yeah, it's nice watching uh, an anime, because I don't actually watch a ton of anime, which is, I assume most people are going to call bullshit on that, but I really don't. I only watch, like, basically I only watch an anime if I read the manga and I really love it. So it's pretty rare for me to watch an anime where I don't know what's going to happen. So Yeah. Uh, it's been fun watching Gintama because I have not read any Gintama at all. Yeah, and that's what this uh, show is here to do. Whether we like it or hate it, it's going to force us to watch more anime than we would have ever expected to do, to do individually. Because <laughs> I also have tried to start Gintama, but just like I'm not able to, especially when it's in 
Japanese all of it through. I just can't spend enough resources to sit down and watch it all in one go. It's just not in me for some reason. I can do it for a dub, but I can't do it for uh, reading songs. I don't know what the, what the difference is there. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's a mental thing from a childhood thing. But regardless, we thank you very much for watching Shonen Archive. Um, as always, you can end up following Zen using the ending thing right there. I remember to link it. I'm going to mention it every single time now because... <laughs> otherwise it'd be a real shame if it wasn't there and someone will call me out on it hopefully and it will get back up there <laughs> i'm pretty sure it's still up there so you should check in and follow him to go check out uh shonen and chill which he does with the ocean man you can stay here to watch more videos featuring me it's almost spooky time zen it's almost time for 13 nights of halloween to come back so i'm gonna be crazy busy which includes also keeping up with shonen archive and everything else yeah, you are going to be busy because you got to do your Halloween stuff. Yeah, I'm already feeling it. Getting all these people together <laughs> from various time zones where I was like, hmm. Really, I did this mindset of trying to keep up and then also over um, to improve every year. It's a pain in the ass, <laughs> let me tell you. I don't know how people do it uh, month to month. I can only do it for one time a year. <laughs> and it's my year's October. So stay around for that. Uh, We will see you guys in the next episode of Shonen Archive. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. So say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Peace out. I gotta stop remembering to wave goodbye. They can't see me waving. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) 